Will Dornan's water walker. How to tie it. This thing is awesome. You need some in your box if you fish stoneflies. Okay, before I get started, and before I get yelled at by both Curtis and Brigham, make sure that you check the link in the description for the materials to tie this fly. Is that good, guys? Bingo. Gosh, okay. All right, this is the water walker stone. This is a very popular pattern for stone flies, anywhere there are stone flies, but it's a cool, just thin profile pattern that has a bunch of knotted legs that are kind of a pain in the butt, but that's what makes the fly so effective. All right, so I'm just gonna get started by dressing a hook. This is a size eight. You can tie them obviously a lot bigger than this. I'll just dress the hook and I'm gonna dub this from the front to the back. And I'm just gonna use like a chocolate brown, kind of buggy-ish dub for this one. Okay, so we'll start from the front and we'll wrap this all the way back. We're gonna build up a little bit of a fat body like this, kind of like Brigham before he started working out. He looked like a wiener dog with no legs. Brickham's yelling at me right now. Okay, so we're gonna get this wiener dog going here. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna wrap the dubbing all the way to the back. And I'll end a little bit up from, from the back of the body and that's where my first tie is gonna be. So I'm gonna tie this one out of just like a light brown foam. This is like root beer or cinnamon or something like that. And I've trimmed the back it kind of has a rough trim job. So what I'll do is I'll just take a lighter to it and burn off those rough edges so it looks more like that. So this is going to be kind of a longer tie-in. So I'm going to take I'm going to take it and hang it over the hook by about that much. And this is already a 3x long hook. This is a, a TMCO 5263. So this is a fairly long and slender fly, which is exactly what you want if you're fishing stoneflies. All right, so once I have that tied in, I'm just gonna get more dubbing on my thread and advance my thread up to the next tie-in point. So the next tie-in point is gonna be about right here. This is, this is a, uh, from where the thread ends to the eye of the hook is where the, the head of the fly is going to be, where we tie in more stuff. So we'll just end right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna tie this in here. Now this is where this, this fly gets a little bit complicated. Um, I'm going to create two like leg jigs so I've got knots tied in this foam or in this this rubber about like this so these knots are roughly maybe a little bit longer than a whole hook shank length apart and this is a little bit hard to do but practice tying knots in your in your rubber legs I tie the knots and I add super glue to them to keep them exactly where I want uh, the easiest way to do it is just take a little marker and mark on the legs where you want the knots to be and then just tie your knots and, and cinch them up like that. But anyway, um, this way the back legs and the front legs are both in the same spot or they're both tied from the same leg. So I'll take this and I'll just pinch it to the side of the fly and tie that in. You're going to tie it in almost right in the middle Maybe the back leg is gonna be a little bit longer, um, but you're gonna pull the front leg forward and it's gonna basically come off right where the eye of the hook is. So I have another one of these that I pre-tied and I'm gonna tie it in right in that same spot. Even if it doesn't tie in exactly where I want it, I can just adjust that as many times as I need to get it to sit right. Okay, so we have this wacko uh, leg structure going on 
and I'll grab some more dubbing and advance my thread all the way to the eye now. Just a little bit of dub. Pull everything back and take this all the way to the eye. Now I'm going to take this foam, tie it in right behind the eye, and then if I have to adjust my legs, I can. I'm going to take those front legs and tie those down now. And you can see how one side is a little shorter than the other. I can just take that one and stretch it a little bit, and it should end up just as long as the other one. You can adjust them as needed. As long as it's close, it's fine. So there we are with our, our sets of rubber legs. Um, from here, this is where we're going to tie in the wing for this material. Now, the wing is what really makes it unique. So as you can see, uh, the wing's very slender as well. When you're, when you're fishing these stones, the wings can kind of go all over the place when they land on the water. And these wings definitely won't just lay flat along the back of the fly. So this is actually River Road uh, speckled foam. Um, it's really cool. The, the original pattern calls for razor foam, but this is the same thickness as razor foam, and it, it kind of is more realistic uh, to what the salmon flies are. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to lay it the whole length of the body, and I'm just going to tie that in with a few wraps, and then I'm going to move that out of the way. Um, on this fly, you know, some guys will use a thread threader or a yeah, leg puller or something to, to tie this middle section of legs on and you do it after the fly is tied. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a section of rubber leg and I'm going to fold that around my thread just like this. And I'm going to take that thread and I'm going to advance my thread back to this first tie-in point and just leave those legs hanging right there for just a second. And they should sit just like that. So when I pull these wings back, that will lock those in place and I'll super glue it and all that fun stuff. But there is also an underwing on the water walker. It kind of gives the appearance of veins in the wing. And I'm going to use root beer crystal flash for that. So I'll just tie that in right here just with a few turns. And now before I pull that wing over, I'm going to dab it with a little bit of super glue right here. And that will keep that leg from pulling out side to side. So I'll just take one of those wings, just secure it with one wrap, and then pull the other one over. All right. So that's pretty much it. What I need to do now is just trim this up. I'm going to take off the uh, hard edges of these wings. And uh, I'll put a, oh yeah, there's one last thing, very, very important. We need a strike indicator. My dog's acting a fool while I'm filming a fly. Brigham is a bad dog handler. Don't hire him as a dog handler. All right, so this is just a little chunk of razor foam and I'll just tie that in right here. This is gonna sit pretty low in the water. So any bit of foam will help. I like to tie mine in a little bit longer in the back. Trim off the tips so it sits just like that. And from here, we'll just throw on a, a hand whip finish. And when I trim that off, anytime you have a hand whip finish, you really want to make sure that you glue that knot. Um, so I can adjust the legs too. I want the back legs kind of coming up a little bit, but it's really not going to matter. Those fish are going to see this fly and just think that it's ready to be eaten. Okay, so to finish the head, I'm gonna trim it a, a little bit longer. 
then the, the eye and take off those hard edges. And then with my scissors, I can just poke one scissor blade into these uh, knotted legs. And I'm going to get rid of just whichever one doesn't angle properly. There's no right or wrong way to do this. See, I like that one. And then I'll trim those about like that. I'll trim this middle leg about the same length as the front one. And then the back I'll do the same as I did in the front. See, I like that one. And then we'll trim the back legs, kind of proportionate as well. Okay, so that's it. You can see that that leg profile right there is what the fish are looking for when they're when they're eating stones. So this pattern really isn't too bad to tie. The thing that's going to take you the longest is getting those legs knotted that way. But once you dial in the knotting of the legs, this is going to be a money pattern. So again, check out flyfishfood.com and go check out all the awesome stuff that Curtis has listed in his favorites. You can really do that on our site. Staff favorites. It's my favorite place.